It was 2 a.m. on October 22nd when the phone rang. And I don't know what happens to you when the phone rings at 2 a.m., but two things happen for me. First, my heart sinks, and then I answer it. It's my son on the other end of the line. Hey, bud, what's up? Mom, I just messed up. I think I just totaled Dad's car. Sure enough, he did. Fast forward, I won't go into the details, but we're in the wee hours of the morning sitting at the kitchen counter, and my son's sitting there going, okay, first of all, how am I going to tell my father what I just did? And B, how am I going to pay for this? And you could see the angst in his face as he's going, okay, hmm, I've got some money saved up already. Uh, I know I, I'll just delay going to school. I can take a semester off of college. It's not a problem. And as a mother, I let him sweat that out a little bit longer <laughs> before I let him in on the secret. Buddy, we have insurance. Yeah, so? Now, that's almost comical. Because what have I been doing my entire life? I've been an insurance professional my entire life. <laughs> and he's trying to think, well, yeah, so? What does that mean to me? And at that moment, it really meant everything. Because I took, went through a few minutes of the early morning mechanics of insurance and how it works. He goes, wait a minute. You mean I don't have to? deplete my savings account, and I can go off to school the way I planned? I said, yeah, bud, that's exactly what it means. You only have to pay your father the $500 deductible and figure out how you're going to tell him. <laughs> now, it brought me to another 2 a.m. wake-up call, and it was my friend Jeff. And Jeff's wake-up call was actually a smoke detector. And that smoke detector went off and woke up the entire family. And as they smelt the smoke, they got up, and he hurried around, got everybody out, and they got safely and out to the side of the road as he's watching the burst of flames now slowly going to smoldering because the fire department made it there. And he's telling me the story he recalls. I didn't realize it was really, I had two minutes to get everybody out safely. As he sat by the side of the road, wrapped in a blanket by the first responder, the wife in a bathrobe and a baby on her lap and a child and a child, and they're like, now what? And he called us, he called the office, and we said, okay, Jeff, we got gotcha. you. We got the hotel waiting for you. I know your wallet was in there. I know everything you had in that house you own is all there. And not only that, they put him up that hotel where everybody could be safe, secure, fed, basic needs met. And it took him two weeks to find a suitable apartment. And the kids didn't have to go to school in pajamas or barefoot. And eventually, insurance was his partner all the way through until he was able to rebuild that house the way it meant to be. It was his financial first responder when it was in its time of need and he needed it most. And as I sat back and I looked at, hmm, what do these 2 AMs have in common? Had it been 20, 30 years ago, it probably would have been the hospital saying, hey, Suzanne, can you come? Your son's going to need pretty significant amount of stitches as well as we need your medical insurance card. And the innovations, I thought about, wow, well, the reason my husband and I looked at that car in particular was we liked a lot of the safety features and benefits. And if you go back and you look at the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, one of the things that they bring up is they say, since they've been collecting data since 1975. And while the U.S. population has been on the increase, accidents and fatalities from them are on the decrease. So insurance was quite smart. They started publishing cars, the safety ratings on these cars, and the innovations that have come with it. I mean, think about it. Airbags, pretty recent development. Does anybody remember the hope and pray method of car seats? <laughs> I do. Now the kids are so safe, we put them backwards and we keep them in car seats until they're almost 12. My father calls it the seeing eye technology, but it's the blind spot monitoring so we don't sideswipe people. It's this technology and innovations that have been there to help us all the way through to make it safer. So who called me that night? My son, not the hospital. When we think about smoke detectors, they didn't become mainstream really until the 80s and 90s. And in fact, in my early years in the career, I remember saying, do you have a smoke detector, death bolt lock, and fire extinguisher? Now, would anybody even dream that there could possibly not have a smoke detector in your home? But yet it saves lives. So the implementation of innovations, insurance has been a partner with this. 
but it's also been a partner in discovering what works and doesn't work. Let's go back and look at Hurricane Andrew or the tornado that went through Barrie, Ontario, Canada. 63,000 homes were destroyed during Hurricane Andrew. Think about that number. 63,000 homes are destroyed. And wait a minute, that one still had a roof. Well, there's three miles over, that one still had a roof. So what was the difference? And insurance partnered with the claims adjusters, with the building inspectors. Did you know there's a little thing called the roof tie down? The roof gets lifted up and the walls can, can implode. And when you tie it down, people think you need walls just to keep the roof on. We need to keep them now, not just lift them off. So the insignificant impact that it had in driving technologies that now in many of the Gulf Coast states and probably other places I would believe that you must have a roof tie down with the new innovations if you rebuild. And now let's think about that for a second. 63,000 homes now have to be rebuilt. Who's going to come to the rescue? I'm sure the federal government was, of course, there, and we hear about it happening all the time. But the number one influx of capital so people could rebuild and restore their lives was what? Yes, insurance. So I would submit to you that insurance is really a partner when you need it most. It's a global leader. It's a national leader. It's a regional leader. How would Florida have been rebuilt without that influx of capital that was required? And yet it's an innovator in helping implement safety so that when your 16-year-old decides that he's going to go find a tree or a telephone pole and that if you're going to have a new hurricane come through, let's not have the same type of claim. Insurance doesn't have to be that green-eyed, hairy monster. It wants to be a partner so that when claims do come, that they're safer, they're better. So go out and be bold. Live your best life. Rebuild your house, but build it safer. Take risks that are calculated, like letting your kids learn to drive. And let them all be speed bumps, because it's inconvenient no matter what you do. But let's not let them be roadblocks where they become financially devastating to you and those around you. Thank you.